Hello and welcome to Groundhog Graphics Retro. My name is Martin and in this video I'm going to discuss different methods of detecting the presence of a RAM expansion unit. I'm going to begin by discussing the hardware signature that seems to be consistent across um, all different models of RAM expansion units, including the modified ones. Then we'll talk about the special attributes of the RAM expansion unit. Uh, in memory, it has some features that will make it obvious that it is also present. We will talk about that. We will also discuss different methods of detection. And finally, I will discuss those methods uh, and their implementations in C. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, let's compare unexpanded memory against expanded memory. So right now, in the emulator, I have no RAM expansion plugged in. I'm going to run my program, REU Trainer, and we're going to see what memory looks like without a RAM expansion attached. And there we have it. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach the RAM expansion unit. And run the program again. So what we're doing now is we're looking at these two, both the unexpanded and the expanded um, Commodore 64. And we're trying to find, we need to find bytes that don't change. Bytes that can't be changed. That can't be changed for the unexpanded Commodore or the expanded RAM expansion or with the RAM expansion unit on it. And the easy part is the registers for the unexpanded Commodore 64, none of those can be changed at all anyway. So that eliminates all of those registers um, out of the problem. Now, the other problem we have though is that the uh, with the RAM expansion module installed, every one of those memory lo <laughs> memory locations can change. However, if you notice at RU Bank number five on the bottom, bit three through seven are all ones. No matter what RAM expansion unit you have installed, even if it's 16 megabytes, even though the even though the RU banks go to 255. All those ones remain ones. You cannot read them as anything else. So if we were to check for those ones, and then we were to go down to interrupt mask, the uppermost significant digits, the uh, the bits, what is that? Bit five and uh, five through seven. Those can change, but the bits before that to the right cannot change. So, if we were to combine that also with our REU bank in a check, and the next, our address control, which is uh, the uppermost two bits, those can change, but all of the bits to the right cannot change. So, if we combine and we were to read and mask off all the bits that can change and just check for the bits that don't change, well, we have a hardware signature to identify that our RAM, is, RAM expansion module has been installed. And the nice thing about this is that by checking for this little hardware signature, we don't actually have to poke and change anything in memory or disturb anything. Um, now, it's true, this is not a fail-safe approach because if there was something installed that, were, that was conflicting with the RAM expansion unit, and it happened to put, uh, let's say, FF in all of those bytes, we would get a false positive. However, I have tested this, uh, just this um, hardware signature, against several cartridges, several expansion cartridges, including the RAM link and, and several others, and I have had it work flawlessly. So now I'm going to clear the screen. 
And I'm going to, oh, and I'm going to turn off the RAM expansion unit. Now I'm going to run REU Trainer again. Now here's our memory locations for the unexpanded uh, C64. Let's go ahead and poke values to some of these registers and let me show you that they do not change. So let's see here. Uh, what's a good one? Uh, well, let's go ahead and just poke the ones we we're going to test against. So REU Bank, uh, DF06, DF06. And I want to make it FF, so it would all be ones. And then I'm going to poke the interrupt mask, DF09. And we will put FF in it. Poke. DF0A, address control. And we will put an FF into that. Okay, so now, if those registers can be written, we will find out very quickly when I run REU Trainer again, because all it does is read those memory locations. Okay. Okay, so I did notice something right now that I hadn't noticed before. Some of these memory locations are actively changing. However, they're not the registers that we attempted to modify. Um, let's see here. REU Bank, you can see, is not FF. Interrupt Mask is not FF. Address Control is not FF. These, these memory locations do not retain values that we poke to them. However, there is a difference between the C64 address, REU Bank is also different, and uh, transfer link is different. That's interesting. Let's go ahead and run REU TR one more time without any pokes and see if they are again different. And since we're at zero, yep. But the uh, are you address? That one is the same. So that's interesting. So these memory locations are actually actively changing. But the memory locations that we're using for comparison uh, for, to see if we have a RAM expansion unit or not those are, well, hell, those are changing too. Well, nonetheless, that's still okay. Because when we check three registers, all for the same values, it's highly unlikely that these changing registers would just happen to match. So our hardware signature will still work. But it is interesting that these are changing. Now... Let's go ahead and attach the RAM expansion unit and just write to one register so we can see everything's working properly. Okay, now we have a RAM expansion unit attached. I will do REU TR. And we see it looks quite different. Um, let's see here. REU Bank. Let's go ahead and set that to FF. Or no, let's do RU address. Poke. FF, FF. This actually pokes two memory locations, DF04 and DF05. So now that should be um, 65,535. Uh, now let's do REUTR. And as we can see, RU address is now 65,535, 
FFFF. So that is also important when we do our second test for determining if the RAM, a RAM expansion uh, unit is actually attached. Because in our second test, what we can do is we can poke to memory locations DF02, which is a C64 address, and we can poke all the way through to transfer length at DF08. And all of those memory locations, we can poke a value in, we can read the value back. Now you may be saying, oh, what about bank? Bank, true. The upper uh, bits are set to ones, those can't be changed. But with a mask, we can check the first three bits. So if we keep the test where we're writing to each memory location, at the first few bits and we do an and mask against all of the all of the memory locations then we can determine if each memory location is retaining value if each one of those memory locations are retaining value plus the hardware signature matched i'm going to say you're you know it's pretty hard to to probably have anything else that would mimic that behavior now this test is a little bit more involved than you know, other tests that may be out there. But in my opinion, the test is not something that would be ran several times in a loop. It's probably something that would be ran once. Therefore, the time it takes to do all of this is pretty insignificant. However, well, since it's so insignificant for the time, it seems to me it would be good to put emphasis on, on, on making sure that this is right. So by checking for the signature and then checking all of those bytes, we can pretty much guarantee we have a RAM expansion unit attached. So now I think it would be a good time to begin looking at the code. All right, so here we are in uh, PowerC in the emulator. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to load up my program. Okay, <clears throat> well, let's start off with our defines up here. Um, I've defined the RAM expansion unit base number memory location is DF00. And um, I'll get back to that in just a second. And I also have uh, RU Bank ID, which, if you notice, is 1111, another one, and then these three zeros to the right. <clears throat> In each one of these masks, you see, all the ones are numbers, are the bits that do not change, uh, no matter what RAM expansion unit you have attached. So, this is going to be this is our mask right here that we'll be comparing against three memory locations, which is the bank, the interrupt mask, and the address control register. And if all of those registers if they come back with a positive ID, then we have a good idea that we probably have a RAM expansion unit attached. <clears throat> now, under here I have a structure, RU registers, RU regs, and what I'm using this for is basically to create a pointer and set that pointer up here to REU base. So once we do that, all of these structure members will then be set directly to the right memory location. So we can refer to the memory locations by a reference name, which is easier than just by a number. So now if we go down, type def, it's not important, it just RU reg, so we don't have to type struct. The main part of the program, um, it just detects if there's an RU, it will print there's an RU detected. It also does size of oh, this video. I'm not going to go into the size just yet, so I'm going to skip over this. That's going to be for an upcoming video. Possibly the next video. I'm not really sure just yet. For Now here is the function that does the RAM expansion unit detection. <clears throat> so we've got uh, variable declarations here of a pointer. We'll use this pointer later on. Uh, well, it's not important right this second is REU uh, by the time this function ends is REU will be either a yes or a no it starts off as a no um, then we create the REU regs 
uh, with a variable name, a pointer, REU, which is equal to the REU base. So we use that structure like an overlay on that memory, on those set of memory locations. And then I also create uh, an actual variable, old REU, to save those registers in temporarily while we do some further testing. Then, let me scroll down here. <clears throat> now we see first REU test checks three memory locations for the REU hardware ID. This is the non-intrusive test. So what we're going to do is it's going to test um, all three memory locations. First, it's going to test REU, the uh, RAM expansion unit bank. We know that the right three bits, bit um, 0, 1, and 2, we know that those can change. But all of the bits to the left from um, bit 3 and up to 7, those cannot change. So we will AND it with the uh, uh, RAM bank, RAM expansion unit bank ID that we uh, defined earlier. And then if it equals that ID after we have uh, ANDed it, then we have a positive that it does match, but we continue on to the next memory location and do the same thing with the interrupt mask. We AND it with the uh, interrupt mask ID. If it equals the interrupt mask ID after that, we do the last test. And this is the RU address control. And we AND that with the address control ID. Of course, if it equals AC ID, we have a positive on all three of these memory locations that they uh, do um, conform to the hardware signature. Now, once we go down, is REU will now equal yes, but this can change. But right now, we do have a positive hardware signature. So, now we are ready for the intrusive test, one that will actually try to alter memory. Because it tries to alter memory, uh, PowerC has B copy to copy memory contents from our pointer to the address of old REU, our data, our, our data type that we defined. And that will store all the current registers um, values in it. And you can see it does counts the byte size of REU regs. So it will copy from the pointer to our uh, storage area old REU. And then we come down, hardware ID is success, now perform test 2. This is intrusive. Check memory locations for ability to retain data. So we have a <clears throat> the pointer that we defined earlier. We are now assigning it to the Commodore address in the RAM expansion unit. Then we are checking um, to make sure that that pointer remains less than the address of the interrupt mask. The interrupt mask, we can't poke anything into that. We don't want to poke anything into that. Um, so once it gets there, it won't process. Pointer just inc increments the uh, memory addresses as we go along. So then each time pointer increments, pointer will equal 5, which is 101 in binary. So then we come down and return no REU if memory locations cannot retain values. So what we do is we go if pointer and 7. We mask it with 7, the first three bits. So what we're doing is with each memory location from the uh, Commodore address to the transfer length of the REU, we are going to uh, mask all the first three bits off because any bits beyond that <clears throat> uh, could give it will give us a false positive when it gets to the RAM expansion bank. So therefore, a way to compensate is just to use uh, the first three bits of each register. So now we and each one with seven, and we check to see if they equal five. They should equal five because we have the pointer up here just assigned at 5. So if it does not equal 5, those first three bits, then that means it is not retaining memory. Uh, it's not retaining what we put in there. And it will say the uh, RAM expansion unit will say no, there's no RAM expansion unit. It doesn't conform. And it will break from the loop. Then it will come down. It will restore 
uh, the saved REU control registers. So it will get, take them from our old data type, or the old REU data type that we saved it in, place it back in the RAM expansion unit, so that way everything seems to be undisturbed, just in case, because it's, it's hard to say. If something is conflicting with it, that is in that uses that memory, perhaps some of those memory addresses can change, and perhaps not all of them can change. So in an attempt not to disrupt anything, I restore all of the RAM, uh, RAM expansion unit control registers. And then at the bottom, we return isreu. Isreu can be yes or it can be no. Now the nice thing here is that this test will test first for these three memory locations to see if they match the hardware signature. If they do not, the intrusive test never executes and it just comes down here and returns a no. And in every situation that I tested this with uh, multiple cartridges, this uh, hardware signature was enough to determine if there was a RAM expansion unit or not. And it never failed. Um, the test after this, this is just a little extra, you know, to make really sure that we have a RAM expansion unit. But this first one here, likelihood is, is if there's no RAM expansion unit in it and there's something else in it, this first test will go, oh, yeah, there, it doesn't match and it will just continue down to the bottom and it will return without ever performing that intrusive test. So now, let's go ahead and watch it work. Okay, RU percent, hit enter. Okay, RAM expansion unit test. Press any key to test or eat end. Okay, I don't remember if I have a RAM expansion unit attached to vice right now or what size it is. So let's see what happens. Are you detected? RAM banks 8. It says it's a 512K. Okay, let me hit Alt O. And indeed, enable RAM expansion module, and it is a 512K. Let's do a 128K. And now let's hit enter. <clears throat> there it is. It detected that RAM expansion unit. And Alt O. Oh, what did I do? Alt O. And let's see here for a modified 16 megabyte. Let's see if it will detect that. No problem. And now for our final test, disable the RAM expansion unit entirely. And I will hit enter. And there it is. RAM expansion unit not detected. So this does work. And I believe this concludes the video. If uh, you have interest in any of the software that I write, it is available on Patreon. Um, I appreciate you watching. I hope that this helps you guys out. If you find any bugs or problems or you have suggestions for improvements, please let me know. Thank you, and I will catch you in the next video.